Well, we're beginning a new series today. And the series is called Deal or No Deal. Is that okay? Uh, in the Word of God, what we have always is a, uh, a deal that the Lord makes us throughout the Scriptures. And of course, the, the series is going to be taken off of... Uh, can we do something? Uh, off, uh, uh, the series is, of course, taken off of the uh, uh, game show. How many have seen the game show, Deal or No Deal? Okay, that's most of us. Good. Well, what happens on this game show, in case you've never seen it, a contestant comes on and, and they're given like 27 cases or 26 cases to, from which to pick. And it, they pick one and then they begin selecting cases and they keep going through the cases until taking chances and trying to beat the banker and, and eventually uh, they make a deal. Now, uh, what God does with us in the scriptures is sort of the same thing. He projects to us a deal. He says, here's my deal. Uh, if you take my deal, you can have an abundant life, you can have blessings beyond your imagination, you can have a great life, you can have a great family, everything will go well with you, or you can take your chances, and you can try to open up cases, and you can try to, you can try to go through life and beat the banker, and most times you're going to lose. Deal or no deal. So over the next couple of weeks, what I want to do is I want to look at some of these deals or no deals that the Lord projects to us. And so I thought the very best one that we could probably do today was look at the deal of, of tithing and giving. How about that? Would that be a good one to look at? Tithing and giving. I think it's in tithing and giving that we absolutely have our very best deal. Uh, Judy and I have been tithing and giving since 1978, nearly 30 years now. Uh, 30 years of giving to the Lord, 30 years of, of laying up, 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 up treasures in the kingdom of God, 30 years. Um, and she wanted me to make sure that you understood that what I'm about to say was done with some works. We didn't just start writhing, writing tithe checks. Before we began tithing, we were in constant debt. Uh, we seemed like we were always like drowning in our debt, phone calls, bills, and all these things coming along. Well, after we began tithing, all that changed. We did some other things as well, but the Lord gave us a plan and the Lord was faithful to his deal. And that's what I'm wanting us to see is that the Lord is faithful to his deal that he wants to give to us. So what he's going to say today to you is deal or no deal. Now you're going to go out of here knowing more about tithing and giving than you've ever known before. And you're going to go out of here with some insights. And so then you've got to make the decision whether you're going to keep opening cases and taking your chances or if you're going to take the Lord's deal. Okay, so let's get into it. How many of you are looking forward to maybe some things that we're going to be learning? Are you, are you, is this okay with you? Good, good. Here's, here's, the, here's the first thing I want to talk about. It's in Malachi chapter 3. It's a very familiar scripture that most of us are familiar uh, with as far as tithing. It's one that you're, you're quoted to, that you're, you're beaten up with. It's one that you know, preachers use to, to whoop you. And, and make you fearful. So let's, let's use it, and I'm going to work through it and try to help us with it a little bit. It says this, Will a man or a woman rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. Now let me, let me work here just a second. Let's, uh, let's ask a different kind of a question. We, let's ask that question, but let's, let's phrase it just a little bit different. If I don't tithe today... Am I robbing God? Uh, uh, and if I am, then tell me why I'm robbing God and how that works. See, preachers will tell you all the time that you're robbing God, and they'll quote this scripture to you, but they'll never tell you why you're robbing God or how it works. Well, I'm going to try to explain it to you just a little bit better. He goes on saying, you are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Now, please notice that God didn't put them under a curse. They put themselves under a curse because they were robbing God. Is that what it says? You're under a curse because you're robbing me. You go out and rob the bank. Now, you can call it a curse, but there's, but there's some situations that's going to happen if you go rob a bank, right? There, 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 there's some things that are going to happen here. And so it's the same way with the Lord. If it's the Lord's money and we're taking it, then we're robbing God. And so this is what I want us to see. There, there, you can call it a curse or you can call it uh, whatever that you want to call it. But, but there, there's, there's circumstances, there's things that are going to happen that's going to take place if you rob a bank. And this is what the Lord is, is saying to us. Uh, he says, uh, let's go on reading. Uh, you're robbing me. Bring, now here's the Lord's deal. Bring the whole, to, well, let me say one more thing before I, before I read this. He says, you're the whole nation of you. The whole nation of you. Let me, let me work there just a second. See, when I don't tithe, I'm just not 
messing with just Delbert. I am not just messing with me. I am, I am also bringing other people under this curse. I'm bringing my wife. I'm bringing, I'm bringing my children. I'm bringing my family. I'm bringing my friends. You see, if they're really my friends and I get in a mess or I create a mess, then, then they're going to be in that mess too, to some degree. Am I right or wrong? You see, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing them into my mess. And so what we do when we don't tithe correctly and do it correctly by the Word of God, the people that we're familiar with and that are around us and all, we bring them into our stuff with us. We bring them into our curse. Now, let me read on. Here's the Lord's deal. Bring the whole tithe. Would you say whole tithe? Whole tithe. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. The Lord Almighty there is translated in the King James Version as the Lord of hosts. In other words, he is the, he is the leader of the army. And what he says here is, I'm going to put my army on this. I'm going to put my angels on this. Now the Lord's deal, the Lord's deal is this. Here's what he says. If you will bring the whole tithe, not 2%, not 5%, not 7%, not 9%. You can test me. You can test me, he says. Don't try to test me if you're just going to give me 2% or if you're just going to give me 3%. Don't expect this to work if you're still going to give me 5%. But if you bring the whole tithe in, you can test me. And what you're going to find out is that I have thrown open the floodgates of heaven and whenever you needed a blessing, you got it. Whenever you are going through things, and let me work on blessing, sometimes the blessing you need is not money. If you're sick, you don't need money. What do you need? You need a healing. You don't have a job. You, don't need, you need a job, right? Your kids are messing up. You, don't need, you want your kids fixed up. When God says, I'll bless you, whatever you're going through, when you need a blessing, I'll make sure you get your blessing. Above that, I'm going to, I'm going to stop the pest from pestering you. I'm going to prevent those pests. The King James Version says, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. I'm going to prevent those pests. Uh, the things you've already got working, your investments, your side jobs, any way that you've got money coming in, any, any way that, that you're being productive, any, I'm going to stop anything, any insect, anything from coming and trying to attack that. I am going to promise you that what you've already got working is going to become more and more productive because I'm stopping the pest from bothering. That's his deal. And he says, you can test me. Deal or no deal. That's what he says. Now, you can go on. You can take your chances. You can go ahead being under the curse. You can go ahead uh, uh, opening your cases and taking your chances and, and, and robbing from the Lord. Or you can take my deal. Now, on the back of your gateways, I have just some questions. Two, two only, only two this week. On the back of your gateway, answer that first one for me. In the book of Malachi, what is the Lord's deal concerning tithing? It is this. He says this. If you'll bring the whole tithe in, you can test me. I'll bless you with the blessing you need when you need the blessing. I'll open the floodgates of heaven, and I'll prevent pest from pestering you. How many of you ever have pestering things? You know, you seem like you're just about to get ahead. You know, you just about get over the hump and all of a sudden some pest comes along. You know, uh, the kids get sick. You got to go to the doctor. The car breaks down. The appliances stop working. Some bill comes due. Pest. The Lord says, I'll prevent that from happening. Yeah, I, this is on my notes and I don't want to take a whole long time on this, but, but we've had, we had a refrigerator one time. We, had, we bought this refrigerator with our first house, and we had that refrigerator like 30 years. Finally, Judy said, I wish this thing would stop working so that we could get a new refrigerator. We had cars that go 200,000 miles, and finally you just say, man. There you go. All right. All right. But he says, I'll do it for you. That's my deal concerning ties for you. 
Uh, the Lord said that people were robbing him. And I told you that we asked the question this way. We asked, okay, if, am I robbing God today? And if I am, if that applies to me, then how does it apply and why does it apply? Explain that to me, Delbert. All right, I'll try. All right, in the book of Leviticus chapter 27 and 30, we get some insight. It says here, a tithe of everything. A tithe of how much? Everything. From the land, whether, no matter where, the, where you get it from, whether it comes from here or whether it comes from there, these were agricultural people. And so what he's saying here is no matter whether it comes from the grain or from, from the soil or from the fruit or from the trees, it belongs to me. He says a tithe, if, 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 if you're my child, then a tithe belongs to me. It's like when the children of Israel went into the promised land, went into the promised land that crossed the Jordan River. God was giving them that land. He says, but a tithe belongs to me. If you're coming into the kingdom of God, you've crossed the Jordan River. A tithe, come on, somebody. A tithe belongs to him, he says. Now, a tithe belongs to me, belongs to the Lord. It is holy. Say that back to me. It is holy. It is holy. It is holy to the Lord. Uh, why is it, why am I robbing God if I don't tithe? Because it belongs to Him. And it's holy. It belongs to Him because it is holy. Now, the thought of holy is simply this. It's something that is taken, set apart to be used by God. Something taken, set apart to be used by God. It becomes holy. All right, we understand the holy prophets. The Bible talks about the holy prophets. People set apart to be used by God. Holy prophets, holy commandments, Ten Commandments. They're holy because they were something that was set apart by God to be used by God. Um, holy, holy scriptures, Holy Spirit, a spirit that is set apart, a lot of spirits out there, but this is the Holy Spirit, something that's set apart to be used by God. How about the Holy One, speaking of Jesus Christ? A man born of a woman, holy, set apart to be used by God in a magnificent way. Your tithe is holy. And when you mess with your tithes, and I want you to hear me, because you've got to hear this. When you mess with your tithes, you're messing with something that's holy. I've always heard holy prophets, holy scriptures, holy commandments, but I don't know if I've ever heard anybody reference the tithe as holy. Have you? Holy tithe. And when we mess with it, what we're doing is we're putting ourselves under a curse because it's holy, because it belongs to the Lord. We, become, we began robbing God for what this money, this aspect in our lives, money, in their lives it was cows or, or, or chickens or grapes or wine or, or whatever that they were tithing. But, but in, our, in our mentality, the way we function is money. All right, so, so what he's saying here is that you're taking what I want to use for something special, something specific, and you're not giving to me, so you're robbing me. And so by doing, there are consequences. Just as if you went and robbed a bank, there's going to be consequences. It's holy. Now, he says this too. Let me, let me, uh, let me show you this. Uh, notice that the Lord said in Malachi, in the passage that we read, it says that he said tithes. Plural. Tithes. And offerings. Not tithe and offering. Tithes and offering. And while I'm, before I get too far away from it, on the back of the gateway, <laughs> I have another question. Is the tithe holy? Does the Bible say that the tithe belongs to the Lord and is the tithe holy? You need to, you need to know that. You need to know that. Uh, it's tithes and offerings, not tithe, singular, and offering. Just as there was more than one offering, there's more than one tithe. Uh, in the, uh, the Bible talks about the sin offering or the peace offering or the thanksgiving offering. And there were a lot of different offerings. There's more than one tithe. More than one tithe. Uh, and what I want to do for the most of the time that we have together uh, for the rest of the time is try to explain to you in these next few minutes these three separate tithes. Now, most of you have never heard this before. It's going to be very interesting to you. So you're going to go out of here understanding much more about tithes 
than you've ever understood before. So let me go through them. Now, as I go through them, I need you to do something for me. I need you to do, number one, see what the, where the tithe went, to whom it went, or to what it went. Then I need you to see what it was specifically set apart to do for, what made it holy, okay? And, and then if, it was, if it's different from the one following or the one previous to it, if there's a different tithe here. So let's begin working here. And the first one that I want to show you is in the one that we're the most familiar with, the one that we all have heard about all of our lives. Uh, it's the one that we're familiar with. So, so let's look at it. Uh, tell me who it goes to. Tell me the purpose of it. And, and tell me what makes it holy. Okay, here we go. Uh, Numbers 18.21 says this. And behold... I have given the children of Levi, given who? Children of Levi, all the tenth. And it's the same word that's used in Malachi, translated tithe. A tithe is a tenth. All the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for an income, for their service, which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle or the place of worship of the congregation. So now where, where, does, where does this tithe go? Children of Israel, what did they do? Why did it go to them? It was from this tribe that the ministry to the people came. This, meant, this tribe brought the priest. From the Levites, the priest came. And from the Levites, the maintenance of the tabernacle was maintained. The maintenance came for the tabernacle. And so what this tithe was specifically set apart to do was to give the ministers an income and to maintain the place of worship. If you give this tithe, you can expect great work, great ministry. You should have great ministry if you give this tithe. If you give this tithe, you should have a great place to come and worship the Lord. There should be a place that you're proud of, a place that's clean, a place that comes and, 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 and in, in that place there is the presence of God. These is, this is what this tithe was set apart or made holy to do. It was sanctified. And so when you don't give this tithe, when you, when you mess with this tithe, what you're doing is you're messing with me. <laughs> Let me make, 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 make it a little better. Uh, when you do it, you're, 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 you're going to get inferior ministry. You're, 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 you're not going to get the best ministry. When you're not going to have the best place of worship. It's going to be lacking. And so when you, when you take away from this tithe, then the way you rob God is it's sanctified, it's set apart to take care of these specific things. But if you do it right, you get the best ministry. You get a wonderful place to come and worship. And it should be there that you find the presence and the teachings of the Lord God. Now that's the first one. That's why who it went to, and that's why it was holy. Let me show you the second one now. Now it was when I... When I uh, Began going through the scriptures and really studying tithes. And I saw this, or a scripture like the one I'm about to read to you. When I saw this, I thought, uh, wow, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. And nobody's ever told me about that before. How does that apply to my life? And so I went on a search, searching it, to try to figure out why does this, what is this? Why is this, uh, why, what's this about? How does this apply to my life? So I want you to see this, and again, I want you to tell me to whom it goes, what it was to accomplish, why it was holy, what it was set apart to do, and if, it was, it, and if it's different from the one we just looked at, okay? Okay, here we go. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verses 23 through 26. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of the corn and the wine and thine oil and the firstlings of the herds and the flocks. Okay, who does this, to whom does this tithe go? Excuse me? To you? To the person giving the tithe? Is that what it says? This tithe goes to the tither. This tithe goes to the person given the tithe. Let me read on. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God. Now it's interesting to me that he puts it in this one. He says that only in this tithe. 
that you may learn to fear the Lord thy God always, and if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far for thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, then the Lord thy God hath blessed, that the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money. And bind it up, or save it up, or put it up, or put it away, save it up, bind it up, uh, bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt bestow, or buy, or spend it on, spend that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. For oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt replace thou, and thou shalt rejoice thou and thine household. Now, who received this tithe? Why is it holy? It's set apart for you to have a life where you're not in financial bondage. To have a life where you can go on vacations. To have a life where you've got some money. Where you don't live from week to week because you're setting it up. Now let me try to explain it to you how this works out. Again, these were agricultural people. And three times a year, God told them, I want you to go to Jerusalem, and I want you to go to a feast or a big, big party. I want all you guys to come here three times a year. It's like a dad getting his family together. I want you guys to come here to Jerusalem, and I want you to have this big party, this big feast. And, and you know, I want you to come at Passover time. I want you to come at Pentecost time. And I want you to come at Tabernacle time. That's, that's spring and that's summer and then that's fall. And he says, I want you to take three vacations a year. And I want you to bring you and your family. And I want you to come. And I want you to, and if it's too far, if you can't drive the cows that far, or, you, or it's too far to carry the grain or the grapes or, or, or the wine or the oil, or it's too far to carry all this stuff, then take it and sell it and make, make it into money. And take that money and save that money up. And so that when you come, it's already paid for. And now I want to read to you that end of part of that passage one more time. In Deuteronomy 14, 26, it says, And thou shalt bestow or spend that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. For oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice. Say rejoice. Rejoice. How many of you... A little money kind of makes you happy. That's, that's, is, would you rather have it or not have it? Which would? How many of you would enjoy three vacations a year? All paid for. All taken care of. Here it is. You can rejoice, you and your household. Not just you, but your whole family's blessed. You get to take them on this big party, this big vacation, three times a year, a whole week, three times a year. This is what this tithe is to do. This is the one mostly we don't do. <laughs> the Lord says he wants you happy. And so into his financial program, his economic system, which is called tithes. We call it economic system. He calls it tithes. Into his economic system, he incorporates into that economic system a system for you to be wealthy. A system for you to put back some money. A system for you to bless your family. So how is it holy then? It's holy because most of us don't do it. And we're stealing from the Lord because we're keeping Him from blessing us and blessing our family. And just as you rob the Lord in the first one, you rob the Lord in the second one. And you're messing with the tithe. And you put yourself under a curse. And you always are in debt. And you always owe the bill collectors. And you're always fighting with this. And you're always fighting with that. There are consequences when we don't do it his way. Deal or no deal. We keep opening cases and trying to beat the banker. And we always lose. <laughs> this tithe is set apart for the giver. It is holy. And you don't do it, you rob God. Is it different from the first one? The first one went to who? To whom? Levi? Ministry? Tabernacle? 
Second one goes to whom? To you. Okay, good. All right, now let me get this third one. I want to go ahead and show you the third one, and then uh, I, I'm going to run through it, and then I'm going to try to put it all together for us. Because, uh, yeah, I want, again, I want you to tell me to whom it goes, why it's holy, how we rob God if we, if we, if we don't give it. And, uh, and, and let's, let's look at this one. Uh, I'm going to read this one from the New, New Living Translation. In Deuteronomy 14, 28 through 29, it says, At the end of every third year, bring the tithe. The tithe of, of your crops and, and, and store it in the nearest town. <coughs> Give it to the Levite who has, Levites who have no inheritance. In other words, uh, ministries that, uh, that, that aren't working anymore. Maybe they've retired. People that don't have an inheritance among you, as well as the foreigners, the transients, living among you, the orphans, the widows, in your town, so they can eat and be satisfied. Then, then, would you say then? Then, then, after you've given this, then the Lord your God will bless you in all your work. Is this a different tithe than the previous two? Is it? Who does this one go to? To whom does this one go? Who? The poor, the needy. The transients, the people that are down and out, the widow, the orphan. How do we rob God if we don't give it? We stop him from blessing these people. Okay. Let me read on to you now. In the New Testament, this becomes the alms. And Matthew 6 Verses 2 through 5, Jesus talking and teaching about the alms and in, the, in this giving. And this one, Jesus is big on alms. He is big on alms. Matthew 6, 2 through 5 says this. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, not if, when you do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, and that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, uh, they have their reward, but when, not if, when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. I could tell you a very funny story here, but I don't have time. What the right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret. In other words, keep this private. Don't go around telling everybody how you help somebody. Do it in secret. Find a private, secret way of doing it. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father, now notice the double emphasis here, thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. What God's saying here is, I am going to take it personally upon myself to make sure if you do this one, that you get blessed. I'm going to, what you've done in secret, I am going to make sure you are openly rewarded. Everybody will see your reward. <sighs> Jesus says, when you do this, do it as privately as possible. And let me now read the end of Deuteronomy 14, 29 to us one more time. Give it, then the Lord your God will bless you in all your work. This is a very, very special tithe, a very, very special offering. What was happening here is that every third year there was a different tithe, another tithe added to the previous. Every third year. And the third year would fall on, everybody wouldn't have the same third year. The third year would, would rotate around. Theoretically, then there was always some giving on that, that year that somebody would be coming. So he didn't put it on everybody to take care of everybody, but he, he, he let everybody rotate around. You understand what I'm trying to say? And there was always monies to give to, to the poor and to the needy. And it was given in the town. It, was, it wasn't taken to the temple. You don't have to bring that one to church. Now, I do, and some of us do, but you don't have to. It's specifically there for people that are down and out, the orphans, the widows, the, the transients, people that are down and out, people that don't have an income. It's specifically for that. Who's it for? Is it holy? Is the second one holy? Is the first one holy? Do we rob God if we don't do it? And we put ourselves under a curse. There are consequences. But if we put, if we do it correctly... We put ourselves under the floodgates of heaven. God says, I'll open it up. You'll have a blessing wherever you need one. 
It's going to be so much blessing that you won't know what to do with all the blessings. Every time you look back, you've been blessed. I'm going to, I'm going to prevent the pest from messing with your stuff. I'm going to bless you. Deal or no deal. Uh, let me now attempt to make this practical and make it applicable to all of us. Let's use a person or a family that says that they have a thousand dollar a week income. We're probably not too far off in today's society. So uh, on the, anyway, there's a thousand dollars a week coming in to the, to the home. Well, <clears throat> a one hundred dollar tithe should be given to the ministry, to the, to the upkeep of the tabernacle. That's, that's, that's that tithe. We all are aware of that one. The second tithe, I should have $100 that goes to me, if that were me. Then I have $100, and the way I do it personally is I have it automatically withdrawn from my checking account to my savings account. And then when it comes vacation time or whatever time, <laughs> whatsoever my soul lusteth after, there it is. And so I have that already sitting there. I put it up. I keep it up. If I put it in my pocket, I'll spend it. Now, I know nobody here is like that, but, but that's the way I do it. So I don't get it. I put it up. <laughs> and then the third one, the third year tithe or the alms tithe, what I do rather than trying to count the years and coming up with all of that extra tithe that third year, every week, which is how I get paid, if you get paid monthly or biweekly or however that you do it, then what I do, though, is I take a third of a tithe. So if it's $100 and $100, then this specific one would be $33.33. I round up to $34. That's what I would do. And that goes now, I give my alms tithe or my, or my third year tithe right here. Because I understand, I know I'm involved in it. I know what a great alms program we have here. We have such a great alms program here that, that people in the city will call us asking us to help people. We've, I've gotten calls from, from the city, uh, city hall. Hey, we got somebody here that needs help or they'll refer them to come and see me. I've gotten calls from the housing authority. I'm going to tell you a story in just a little while where a word got out that, that we helped people. And, 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 but we get, we get calls and it's daily. We get, we get these calls. So, so we have a great program here with alms, and it's done in secret. I don't even know where my money goes. It's just pulled together, and it's done in secret. And so therefore, the Lord rewards me openly. He makes sure I'm blessed. So that's how I work it out into my life. And I can do this, and if I do this, then what happens, what happens to me is God says, I'm going to bless you, bless you, bless you. I, uh, I have a unique position here at LifeGate Church, and as do the elders, because we, we know who honors the Lord, who reverences the tithe as holy. And, and so um, we're able to, to observe lives, you know. And it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. You stand in astonishment sometimes when, when you see these people, how blessed they are. They go through stuff. And it's not like I'm trying to say they don't go through stuff. They go all, we all go through stuff. But it's like God just does something miraculous for them. It just all of a sudden, the floodgates of heaven open up, and all of a sudden, boom, there's a blessing. I'm going to tell you a story in just a second where that happened. But, but it's amazing to me, and, and, and what I'm trying to tell you is, is that God is faithful. And be able, being able to watch this over 20-plus years now of ministry, it's amazing to me how God takes care of these people. And He is faithful, and He does this. This is the deal that God gives us. But most of us, most of us, and most of you got your, your giving this week from last year, most of us take our chances and we open up the cases and we stay under the curse and, and we try to rob God. I, uh, I want to close by telling you a few quick stories that I think are going to be meaningful to you. Um, not long ago, the, uh, the uh, hospice uh, building was, was built right back here. They, they took this building behind us and they remodeled it in, in the hospice and and, uh, and, and the lady called me, uh, who, who's over it. And uh, uh, she called here, and, I, and whoever answered the phone come and got me. And she says, Pastor Young, she says, I've heard you, 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 know, you guys try to help some people sometimes. And said, uh, we have a situation. Uh, a lady, a lady uh, has gone into hospice care, and she'll be dying. But, you know, we, we were trying to take care of her. And she, he says, uh, uh, we... W her insurance hasn't approved her care yet. Now, I, she said, I can, I can get somebody to go by and check on her. I can get a nurse to go by and do that. But I can't, I can't 
buy her medication. I can't buy her pain medication. I think she had cancer and she had had a uh, colostomy uh, uh, operation and now she required bags. And, and she says, and I can't, I can't do that. Can you help us? I said, sure. She said, well, I heard you, you do. And I, it would help you. And see, so we were able to do that. We were able to help this poor dying woman in her last days. All kinds of stories I could share with you. The phone rings daily, and in holiday season, it's like all the time. We find a way every year to give, around, give away about $6,000. Just here. I'll tell you one more story, and then there are a lot of these, too, but I just kind of selected. I asked Randy if I could tell the story this week. Several years ago, and Randy's been with us, been with me in, in ministry for, for 20 years, right at it. And, and all the all, all whole time I've known him, Randy's been a tither, a giver. And, uh, and he's, he's been very faithful with that. Well, uh, the place, one day he came to my office, and the place that he had been working with for many years was, was cutting back. And they had laid Randy off. And, of course, you know how you feel if you've ever been terminated from a job. You know how, how that feels. You're depressed. You don't know where you're going to go. You, you feel rejected. You're going through all this stuff. And I, I looked at Randy and I said, Randy, I, said, I, don't, I don't know how. I said, I don't know how he'll do it, but I'll, I know this. I know that God is going to take care of you. You have a deal with God. <laughs> and I said, so let's, let's just go to work. I said, let's get together. We'll make you a resume and we'll get that thing going. So we sat down, made him a, a, a good resume. He got it out there and he was offered a lot of jobs, but none wanted to pay him what he needed. And the good thing about the place that did terminate him, they said that we'll pay you for a while until you can find a job. Well, this rocked on week after week after week. And after a, a, a several weeks of this, Randy is getting worried. And, and he, he's, you know, we're talking together and he's, he's telling me, I'm worried. And he, I said, Randy, I'm telling you, God's going to take care of you. Don't let it worry you. And he, you know, I, said, I said, take your family on vacation. <laughs> Randy, am I right? Randy looks at me and says, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm not. God's going to take care of you. I don't know how. He's getting paid. He continues to tithe. I just knew God was going to take care of him. Well, he finally took a job. And the day that he was supposed to go to work, if I remember right, it was that night he was supposed to report to work at this particular job. Well, that, the place that terminated him calls him. And they say, Randy, we want you to come back to work for us. But we don't only want you to come back to work for us. We want to put you as overseer over the whole operation. Not only, not only did he get his job back, he got a great promotion and a great raise. I'm trying to tell you something. When you need a blessing, God says, I'll open up the floodgates of heaven and there it is for you. The deal or no deal. We're idiots not to do this, right? Uh-oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I got to take this one. Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, I will. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye. Well, that was God. <laughs> said to tell you, here's his deal. <laughs> if you bring the whole tithe, and all three tithes make the whole tithe, he says, you can test me. And you'll find that I've opened up the floodgates of heaven for you. And I've poured you out a blessing every time you needed one. You can test me, and you'll find that I've prevented the pest from devouring you. You'll test me, and you'll find out you've got great ministry. Test me, you'll find you have a great place to worship. Test me, says the Lord. He says, if you'll bring the whole tithe in, you'll find you're out of debt. All your bills are paid. You're going on three or five vacations a year. All paid for, all taken care of. You and your family. You'll find out that I've blessed hundreds and hundreds of people through you that you don't even know. And that because you did that in secret, I'm rewarding you openly. Says the Lord of hosts, you can take my deal or you can continue to play the game 
open your cases. You can try to beat the banker, live under the curse, and try to rob God and get by with it. Or you can take my deal and have an abundant life, a prosperous life, a great life. Deal or no deal. Let's pray. Father, thank you. What a great, great word. An eye-opening, heart-opening word. You so want to bless us. You so want us prosperous. You make a way. And Lord, I ask you now that every heart deals with itself. That every heart, every single person comes to the conclusion that you offer a great deal. Help us, Lord, now to do it. And I ask it in Jesus' name.